Hi everyone, welcome to the Matrix Oracle. My name is Audrey. This is your full moon in Gemini reading according to your birth chart. So we're going to have a couple of things going on. One, tutorial. Two, collective message for this full moon. Three, message according to the house where you'll have this full moon going on. So if you already know, you can skip ahead collective message your house message, or if you don't know yet how to personalize those readings, let's go and check out the tutorial. Tutorial to look at this moon energy in your chart. I use AstroDianced as my favorite website. You want to make sure that you go here in the option of horoscope drawings and data and extended chart selection. You'll get to this page and you want to know the full moon and Gemini's details. So we're going to look at this quickly. Full moon and Gemini on November 27th, 2023 at 4 a.m. 16 minutes. It's going to be on an East Coast town. So I could choose Boston, New York, Miami, you know, uh, Savannah, whatever. Um, but that has to be the East Coast according to the time that I picked. All right. And then you would go into chart type, and this is where you choose synastry chart. When you do this, you have an example person that I picked, all right, and you hit show the chart. So the first top person is going to be in blue, and this one is going to be in red, okay? Something you want to know if you put yourself here and the full moon there. It's going to be different. It's going to be reversed. So here we have the full moon in blue. It's happening here. So the sun, but the energy of the full moon here is going to hit this person's fourth house. Okay. The number for the house, because you see, I see this is here. Okay. Oop. Move on. Oop. There we go. So this is the first house second house, third house, fourth house. So for this person, fourth house energy message, collective message as well can be interesting. All right, I trust this is supporting you. Share with me if you'd like in the comment what house this full moon is affecting you. All right, let's rock and roll. All right, let's start with the collective message. We're going to use the oracles of the mermaid. Literally, this, this deck just flew out of my drawer and the card as well, which I'll show you in a second. Um, the Romans angels are showing us some type of self-love, self-worthiness, resolution, and we're going to use the moon deck as far as a higher guidance with our self-care and self-love. Now, collectively, this full moon in Gemini, it's in the placements of the degrees of Gemini that speaks of going by your principles. There's definitely authenticity that is screaming out of this energy and look at those cards. So sometimes you'll see my face because I am expressive and I feel like I'm talking to you directly, but sometimes I like to focus on the cards. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay. We have, oh, let me turn this around for you guys. Mm -hmm. We have, and that literally flew out of my hands, wave of power wave of power coming through. There's some deliverance here. I don't know if you feel it. Some of you, you may have started to feel this energy, some type of like freedom that you're experiencing. It says here, a surge of power, upswing in energy, exhilarating movement. I love this. This feels like there's some celebration. And this is where we're going to look at what is finally allowing this energy to move out and through us so strongly. I feel like I want to put my little crystals that you're not seeing. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, some of you, you may um, be called also to work with crystals. Okay. That could be something that uh, could be helpful or something that you have the habit of doing. So keep on doing this. We're getting rid of some codependency. We're getting rid of some codependency and finally finding more playfulness in how we're going about things. I love this. I've been feeling this. Um, some of you, if you're still struggling 
with codependency. This is why I create the music that I create, my super empath. If you're struggling with boundaries, this is why I have the super empath uh, playlist. More recently, I have released the Auric Health and Wealth. This is for the ones that have been practicing a little bit more with those frequencies for a while. And there's some upgrades there. Um, let's see what the moon is sharing as a guidance. We have here, movement awakens my creative spirit. Obviously, this is going to be big on my page. You guys know that I love dance. I love movement because the way that I see dance, I'm not a professional dancer. I love to dance. Uh, I've been dancing all my life. Um, but as far as what I see when I see people dance, I see the soul moving and I see the freedom in it or sometimes there's a restriction. So some of you, I feel like that's something that you want to know. Like if you are feeling like you are called to dance and let loose, allow yourself to feel how you relate to dancing, how you relate to your own body, because it says your movement awakens your creative spirit, and that's the feminine. And that means if you're a man gender watching this, this is for you as well, because in the way that you're going to feel your body, you're going to be able to tap into some of the blocks, see what is blocking you. And let's see if this reading is going to give us more energy insights as far as what to expect. All right, let's go for the house. Again, make sure you watch the tutorial if you don't know how to do this and know where this woman energy is going to take place so you have a greater message. All right, let's do it. All right, house number one. If you have this full moon that wants to really strip you out of any untruth, really reveal your authentic self. Let's see what message wants to come forward for you. I feel that there was two cards, so I put it back. But <laughs> again, there's something here as far as um, letting yourself be surprised by how things turn out, okay, for your house, number one. It's almost like, yeah, I thought this was going to be like this, but the universe has something greater in mind. So let's look at all the cards because I have no idea <laughs> what to expect now. The mirror. Know thyself, self-examination, seeing who you really are. Oh, not surprising. Not surprising with this energy. The first house is the house of the becoming of the higher self. This is where, you know, you're allowing this sacred energy the sacred avatar to come through. And there's some mirror effect here. And we have vision, psychic images, clairvoyance, seeing out of body travel. Now, I, look at this full moon there. It was interesting because I felt that there was a reverse energy. I flipped it, but we're going to see if those other cards may have some indication of why we could have some third eye block. Mm, retreat. Okay, retreat here is the time to disconnect from the world. All right. And this came reverse. My home is a sacred space full of beauty, inspiration, and protection. And this reverse also. Play is my pathway to joy. Okay. All right. So I feel this is this is kind of calling you within house number one as far as this um, energy for the full moon in Gemini. There's some practice, and I don't know if you watch the collective message, but I felt like I wanted crystals to be part of this. There's some indication that you want to almost like clear the space. So some of you, maybe you've done already some work as far as clearing some of your um, communication, relationships, especially with the mirror. You're going to probably have some relationships that have been cleared along the way. Uh, I feel this is more like honoring also the space. Maybe you feel like you're changing uh, the way you're dressing or you want to upgrade your surrounding, your bedroom, uh, your car or whatever. There's just like, there's some type of renewal that wants to happen. And it's starting by almost like 
looking at who you become when you spend some of those moments by yourself, when you spend some of those moments rebalancing your yin yang. I feel that some of you, if that's something that you're struggling in terms of your psychic visions, okay, um, go and check out the yin yang frequency playlist, okay, and see what what needs to be upgraded. I feel obviously the feminine is the unknown territory. It's the hidden, um, especially with the joy here. I feel that maybe your yin energy and also the psychic gift wants to be, you know, purified. There might be some auric cleansing and strengthening, something you can also find this time on my auric health and wealth or my survival kit for empath. Those two have this. There's some cleansing that is occurring and that has occurred. It's just like an indication I feel for your house number one that you have to take it like almost to the next level. You've changed. You're changing. Let yourself express yourself differently. Change it up, okay? Um, and literally pay attention also to your surrounding. If there's any clutter, anything that you look at, you know, some people like keep like clothes, like in case I gain weight, in case I lose weight, like kind of see how you relate to all those things and just be be more in authenticity with who you are and who you want to be and how this, this wants to be expressed. And that's going to start with like small details because I feel like that home energy, it's almost like something that you feel. And if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling uncomfortable in your clothes or if you feel like you want to update um you know, clothes, there's something here. I don't know, it might be for people that have some, um, that might be the air element from Gemini. <laughs> you know, this this little bit of, and that joyfulness, it's almost like, okay, that might be like superficial. Maybe it's like putting more makeup or just make your hair look different. Um, but it feels important if you have this full moon in um, house number one. All right, that's what I have for you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and do all those good things to help the channel grow. Thank you. All right, house number two for this full moon. Okay, I feel like this one too. Again, letting my flow and <laughs> my bliss. I sometimes want to like, yeah, I'll take two cards, one card. And then, no, <laughs> the universe is like, no, Audrey, no, you're trying to control and we're not doing this. That might be something for your house number two. This is about the embodiment of the energy of the higher self from house one to house number two, your values, how you relate. It's very physical in that house. Okay. So let's see first the cards that we have. Okay. Telepathy. Interesting. Beautiful card. Nonverbal communication. Energetic pulses. I like that. Mind reading. I feel like you're getting some upgrades about how you relate to this um, energy traveling through your body. Ooh, divination. Prophecy, fate, destiny, and future fortune. I got excited all of a sudden. <laughs> I got excited all of a sudden. There's something I, I just I want to mention, and that might not be the case for everyone, but some of you, if you've been looking for a relationship, I feel there's something coming, okay? Yeah, you deserve love. Something more in alignment with, with what you, you want. Maybe you had to release a relationship and you're wondering if, you know, if you should have or whatever. But there's something in here, it feels very Sagittarius energy, which is where the sun is. So this is interesting for your house number two, because, um, you know, that, that, that creates this polarity. Might be something about, you know, twin flames or this type of like soul contract that is strong. Again, not for everyone, but some of you, that could be the case. It says here. With a steady mind, I am connected to our collective experience. Interesting. Okay. And I have unlimited potential and claim my purpose. All I need is within me. Okay, house number two, this full moon is just, it's almost as if, you know, um, you're hearing a call 
for something greater with this energy. Remember that that placement of the moon is in the degrees of Gemini that speaks of respecting your principles, being authentic to your principles. Yeah, this person does things like that. That person, that group of people does things. You have to be really in integrity with your own principles. And I feel like the more you're doing this, the more you're getting telepathic guidance to manifest something really dear to your heart. Some of you, it is more than just, you know, um, self-love. It's, it's maybe you've been on that journey. I feel some of you, you've been on that journey for a while, but it could be like finally meeting someone that is in alignment. There is definitely here, as if you're tapping into a soul group, your soul group, your monad, and accessing through this energy, you know, um, a potential that was dormant. But you had to release something, and that was probably something. Oof, my right ear is like blasting with a high pitch right now. <laughs> uh, definitely some truth here. Um, you had to release something. It might have not been easy. I feel like I want to pull another card for you. Mm, give your relationship a chance. And I feel this is more your own relationship as far as what you want or believe you deserve. Okay. So yin yang playlist already came up for um, pile number, or well, house, not pile, house number one for this energy. I feel that it's important for you. Maybe also you gave that relationship a chance and it didn't pan out. Some of you, if you're in a stable relationship and you've been ups and down, there's almost like you focusing on you and making sure you're in alignment and listening to your telepathic nudges is very important because it's going to realign and recalibrate the relationship inside and out. And there's some higher gift that comes. A lot of like full moon energy is coming uh, through this, okay, for you, house number two. There's definitely, you saw the collective message is a wave of power. So you're definitely getting um, getting this, 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 this almost like mastery of yin and yin from tapping into your higher self, your, you know, it's almost like the collective, um, the Akash, some of you may have access to the library, being able to see past life. Some of you may have, uh, if you're struggling and you have this and you're like, well, it's not happening for me. I feel like you might want to look at the soul fragments retrieval. This is something that I, you know, uh, released just recently that could help you as far as remembrance and make the right choices uh, in your case. All right, house number two, that's what I have for you. Please make sure you give it a thumbs up if it resonated and subscribe, follow, comment. Let me know if that's your house. Thank you. Namaste. All right, house number three. Let's see that full moon energy. Okay. Let's see, let's see what we have for you. Okay. Oop. Oop. All right. Let's angle that a little bit better. There we go. So we have time and tide, oceanic, oceanic, I'm sorry, spells and rituals. Okay. And there we have song of the siren. The call, summoning, voice, to acknowledge. This is interesting, especially with this uh, third house um, energy where your higher selves want to communicate in greater ways um, through this, you know, placement. We have, my inner compass knows the way. And I welcome clear vision and inspired action now what was interesting those cards felt reversed a little bit here so i feel for you there's a need to take some time and almost like there's some ancestors energy with the spells with the rituals it might be something that you know you like to practice maybe some affirmations i like to sing mantras but you know that can be personal there's something about your rituals here Ooh, and the wedding. The situation involves marriage. It's interesting because a lot of the houses 
um, really showed the need to have proper yin yang balance. So some of you, if you haven't checked out that playlist, this is something that can help you. This is all the yin yang playlist is all about your organs. You have organs that are yin in your body and you have organs that are yang. And this is going to help you feel this energy and how it travels through your body because it's connected to your meridians. So house number three, I almost feel like I want to um, pull more cards for you. This is interesting. Okay. Imrama, wonder voyage crossing deep waters, pilgrimage, journey of the soul. Okay, there's something, you have to deep dive here. There's something here as far as the power of your voice, um, the power of you know, spells are really like spelling. The way you can manifest, there's a strong revelation of your manifestation powers connected to your ancestors, connected to your voice, connected to maybe some of the rituals that you know. Let's see if we have a little bit more details here. Okay, very soon. Clearly decide what you want so it comes to you now. It came in reverse. I feel for your house number three, this full moon is going to clear the way and it has cleared away uh, from coming from this new cycle. So you can have a clearer vision and can be more in alignment with your compass. Remember the surge of power is because you're releasing some of those past contracts, karmic debts, uh, and you're more authentic uh, in yourself, thanks to that placement of the moon in Gemini. Now, the very soon was reversed because it feels like you need to harness almost like um, how far you've come, you know, and really tap from the place of your higher self, your new self, your newfound self, find your, your your vision see how you can see now that you're not that version of yourself that was surviving you know always in fight or flight who are you becoming house number three and once you know and once you start communicating because it's not something like some of you is like well I don't know Audrey I don't know I can sense that <laughs> I can feel that energy um it's almost like you have to tap into your ancestral lineage because part of the ancestors is an older version of you. Definitely soul retrieval, soul fragments retrieval is something I released in the auric health and wealth can help you there because as soon as you know house number three, it's going to be like smash, beam, boom, them. Everything is just going to manifest very fast for you. Um, but yeah, it's almost as if you want to be in alignment with those versions of yourself and retrieve that light that can shine the way in greater ways for you and show you more clearly. That's what I have for you. If it resonated, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe, like, comment. Um, and uh, if you want to share what house you have this energy, I would love to know. Thank you so very much, house three. House number four, the house of the home, sweet home, but also the physical, spiritual home, the temple. Let's see what we have in the tutorial that was that person. It's not a person that I know, so <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> but let's see what that could be for that person. Um, made of character. All right, let's see. House number four, what do we have for you? Up. Oh. Ooh, a couple of cards. Ooh, much more than I expected. All right, let's see. All right. <laughs> um, we're going to start with this. Oh, yes. Energy feel adjustment. Aura cleansing and health. All right. House number four. You're going to check out my auric health and wealth. Okay, that's like... There's something about your aura that needs clearance. Remember house number four. It's your family. It's your home. But it's also how you treat yourself as a home. Okay, how you're, you know, you have the energy of the embodiment of the higher self, how it vibrates in your field, how you communicate with it. Now it's like, how do we have this whole temple um, that manifests? So 
yeah, definitely here already. I feel this big surge. And this is why, you know, when I pulled the cards and I was like, this feels messy. <laughs> I was like, okay, but you know, I, I, I know messy. I know chaos. I know conflict. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, there could be some adjustment when I said that about your relationship to chaos, to disorder, to conflict, disharmony, dis-ease even. Time and tide. Yeah. Some of you, I feel that um, you're going to start releasing more and more some of the quantum fascia matrices, your structured water, how, you know, certain experiences when you haven't processed them, they, they, they create still some, some reaction, almost like put you on automatic. Okay. So I really feel that for you. We are all sisters and reflect the divine in one another and play is my pathway to joy. There's something as far as maybe sisterhood that I feel here, maybe the relationship to the feminine. Maybe some of you, you have a hard time with the feminine uh, energy and that can be reflected in your feminine relationships. Okay. Let go of control issues. I, feel, I don't know why I'm putting this here. Well, uh, that's how it feels. Okay, there's something here as far as maybe there was some type of control. Stay optimistic about your love life. But I feel here for some reason it's most... Um, some of you maybe if, if, if you've been lacking like the feeling of belonging, having a community finding the right friends that resonate with the new you that you're, you're, you're becoming. Stay optimistic. There's something, there's something greater here, but it says unrequited love and you deserve love. So I feel here for some of you, it's very interesting, but we have this, especially with those placement of Jupiter, Uranus right now in Taurus that are talking about the joy we feel with the blessings and unconditional love. You know, Taurus has to hold that light uh, of intention, of creation. And for you, house number four, I feel that maybe you've been trying to be in relationships that are not a match to how beautiful and how amazing you are. There's just something greater. Maybe you need to shift in your optimism Maybe there were some negative relationships. Um, you may have suffered from narcissistic, you know, um, relationship. Maybe a parent with those traits, you know, disorders um, that could have maybe repeated again and again. So I feel that for you, there's definitely house number four, this full moon, uh, a shift in your energy that's going to reveal to you more clearly those dynamics, okay, and they're going to allow you to move beyond this, yeah, and I feel like I put the finances and career in reverse, definitely, if you've been in the red with your money, uh, you know, or always, there's something about give and take, that you've been spending more energy focusing on people that may fall apart, that's my empaths out there, you're attracted to the ones that are danger, or kind of like, eh, they're not in harmony, remember we talked about this, this harmony, this, you know, um, ease, discomfort, you gotta let go of hyper-focusing on other people's, you know, need for stability that you feel you need to fix, um, I keep on using my hand. It's almost like that energy. Use it on yourself. Use the healing hands of some of you do Reiki. Definitely for you, house number four. I trust this resonates. Please give it a thumbs up. If it did, you know, share with me your feedback or share what house you have, this energy. Thank you so very much. House number five. What do we have for this full moon in Gemini? All right, okay. All right, up. Up, up, up. All right. <laughs> up, up, up. All right, we're going to reveal like this. Okay, pay attention to the red flags that came reversed. Okay, there's something for you, House 5, that we have to pay attention to. Wedding, okay. And 
very soon. All right, let's see those energies here. But let's remember that this was reversed. Endurance, keep going. The crane bag, sacred ocean medicine, clutter, declutter, choice. This is interesting. I have unlimited potential and claim my purpose. All I need is within me. I trust the mystery of life in reverse. Um, there's something that I feel for you with this energy. It's interesting because think about it for a second, house five. House five is the house of self-expression. It's the house of pleasure. It's the inner child. Now, if you have that energy, that means the full moon in Gemini that holds this energy of you being in alignment with your authentic self because you go by your principles, not other people's. And according to your principles, you're going to attract a certain, you know, manifestation of your life, but there's also a certain way you express yourself. Okay, I feel there's some type of shift for you. And I almost want to say, maybe some of you, and that's not going to resonate for everyone, there could have been some breakup. There could have been some even like divorce imminent. There's some type of separation. But I feel like, let, let yourself hear this. When you have those energies, sometimes it manifests outside, but sometimes it is something that we're feeling from inside. Because in order for us to allow the unbecoming of the things that we became out of unawareness, there's this, this breaking that happens. This, this is where the light enters from your, you know, the light to the heart, love. So it could be something that is felt right now because it feels that there is a greater way for you to express yourself. And it's telling you you know, declutter some of your beliefs. And some of you might be beliefs about relationships. You could have like, you know, biases around women or men or relationship altogether because of what you've seen, of what you experienced through your parents. Or maybe this could be some fears, you know, I don't want to get divorced or I don't, I'm scared of, you know, someone cheating on me. Or there's something here that you have to pay attention to because it's more of this energy inside of you what you hold inside is going to manifest and some of you if there is some type of falling out it feels that it's for something greater and that sometimes you guys that's with the same person okay but there could be some some ways that you relate to others but especially to yourself because i feel that here house number five the universe is saying hey i gotta put you on the track that is more in alignment with something so much greater that the way you relate to yin and yang but the way that's something i suggest you would play as far as music healing um you can see it. You can't, it's almost like you can see not the red flags, but almost like the green signs or the sign like go there. Okay. There's just some energy here for your house. Number five, that whatever breaks and falls apart uh, or doesn't bring you joy is important to pay attention because there's some work here. Yes, receptivity, allow yourself to receive, allow yourself to give. There's something, there's a gift. It feels very important, but it feels like there could be an ego death. There could be some type of like dark night of the soul for this energy because there's some, but that, and I'm telling you, you guys, because I've had many <laughs> since, you know, my awakening, and Kundalini awakening, it gets easier, I promise. Um, but it's more like the more you hold on to a version of yourself and what you thought you were or you want to be or this, 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 it just doesn't allow you to see how much greater it is beyond, beyond and behind this, this fear and this almost like this very rigid perception of what things or the way things should be. And that could be in relationships as well for some of you, if that's something um, that you wanted to manifest. And that's definitely here some clearance. 
because there's something greater that wants to come forward, okay? Now, the new love came reversed because that means that you have to first really love yourself. It's been, it's, it's very important for those degrees of Gemini, okay? Gemini is a transmuter. The moon is going to be in the early degrees of Gemini, which is about that authenticity. And that means like, you know, it's almost like yin and yang. You need to make sure that you're, you see eye to eye. And that means your heart and mind. It's like the first degree of your heart and mind coherence. And only through this can you find a renewal of how you relate to yourself and others. And, you know, there's just a lot of, I feel like inner child healing. Some of you, if you follow my, you know, um, page and the YouTube playlist, I have some aura cleansing, the new auric health and wealth also, that's going to be good. I'm going to have some inner child healing that's going to be released as well. So again, it feels like there's just a gift of who you can become that's coming through this full moon energy, but it needs a little bit of energetic cleansing as far as what you used to believe and it's more like mental I feel for you um versus house war was a little bit more like energy uh you know just a little bit more emotional it's just more like swords energy that I feel for you all right that's what I have for you house number five I trust this supported you please give it a like comment if you have any feedback or things that are happening I would love to hear thank you so very much namaste House number six. All right, the card was standing out. Let's see what we have for you as a message. Up, up. And for you, I just feel like it's up. Okay, all right. <laughs> we will. We will. We will. There's something about willpower here, I feel. Let's see. The unseen, too much is hidden from you. Hmm. All right. A little creepy, huh? <laughs> but it's still, remember, this, this feels like there's some shadow work to do, okay? Or that could be brought up to the surface for you, house six. Oh, but you have the wave of power. This is what I, I try to explain to people that fear shadow work. There's just, it's almost as if, if you're a child and you're just like, oh, I, I think there's something in the closet. And then you turn on the light and just clear and it's like, oh, that was this. It just, there's, there, and there's like this reassurance that comes and this, this feeling of like realizing how much illusion, you know, the mind can play. All right. Let's see, let's see what the other cards are, you know, uh, showing you. House number six. It feels like, I have to say, like I start like feeling almost like blank in my mind or foggy. I feel as some of you, it could be some irrational fear. You have, there's some irrational fear. Maybe a fear of speaking, a fear of showing yourself, a fear of, again, this is, you know, here we're with this full moon in Gemini. This is about your authenticity. This is about your principle. I want to share this with you guys because... I know this energy, I don't have it in the sixth house, um, but, you know, for example, for me, I became vegan, and I remember my family having such a hard time with it, that I had to fight a lot, and at some point on my journey, I kind of caved in many times, and the times that I did were never because I felt weak, or I felt this, I actually had great health, but it was because I was not, I didn't have strong boundaries in terms of my beliefs, even though I was very strong in my mind about them. But it was like emotionally, I did not know how to, you know, not feel bad for how bad my decisions made people feel. People were very like clear about, you know, you make me feel that way and that way. And, you know, and there was just so much. And, it's something that it took me years to be able to, you know, affirm without also trying, like I never tried to make people bad or feel bad about it. It was just my choice. But 
it was a journey for me to understand that my struggle to stay authentic to my principles was because I had weaker boundaries as an empath. It was very hard for me not to absorb how they felt about my decisions and that made it very hard and um, probably, you know, like took me, of course, many times as far as what is meant for me. And again, that's here, like just the principle of eating or whatever. Um, but I, that's the, the example I have for your house number six. Okay. And especially this is the house of health. So maybe there's some principles about how you treat yourself and things you don't eat or don't want to do or, you know, that are related to your health. Maybe you believe in certain like, you know, vibrational medicine or things like that. And not that you have to skip, you know, going to the doctors. Again, I'm not a professional here. Um, but there's, there's something here as far as maybe letting others influence you uh, that the full moon in Gemini wants to reveal to you. And it says it's like there's too much hidden. Okay. And that means it seems that it's taking a lot of your power away. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what we have more. Okay. Those came in reverse. Attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. So some of you, it, it might, you know, uh, that type of dynamic, and it feels like maybe you're an empath that doesn't have um, strong boundaries. And again, no judgment here because I yeah, told you for me, it was, uh, that was a small example, but I had a lot of, you know, struggle because I did not have the awareness of what was mine and what was others. So I believe that what I felt was all me. Um, and we have the honeymoon card here. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. That is usually my card for going into and tapping into your 5d self. Okay. There's something as far as your higher version of self that is not, and I don't want to say, but I want to say it, respected. There's something about respect here. It's almost like you have to honor yourself and how you feel about things and allow yourself to, to feel that you know, this is, this is who you are. This is who you're becoming. This is the choice that you're making. And let's see what we have here as far as the cards. We have, with a steady mind, I am connected to our collective experience. Okay, this card has been coming up a few times. This is about soul retrieval, I feel, for some of you. There's something here that may be in the past. This life, past life, usually they're, they're in correlation. You know, things that you live in this life... They're like small glimpses of things that you may have lived in a grander scale, okay? Um, there's some soul retrieval fragments that are happening here. You have a frequency for this on the Auric uh, Health and Wealth playlist. I free myself from critical thoughts towards my body and my worth. This is something, I just, I feel that some of you, maybe you're into herbs instead of medication. Maybe you just, you know, just things about vaccines and you have certain beliefs and I feel that it is important for you to, to harness that. I want to, like, why? Why is it so important for you? How six. New love. Ooh, new love of another card. Very soon, new love. Okay, so some of you, there's something destined. And it can be a relationship, but it doesn't have to be. There's something destined as far as when you, uh, and, you know, I told you there's like a 5D energy here. I feel like some of you, if you've been wanting to manifest some one or soul tribe or a job, something that is more in alignment with you, that can respect this word is so big here. Respect who you are. You want to do this work because it wants, there's, there's new love coming and it wants to come fast. But this, this, it's almost as if, as if you only hear this message, it's boom, it can shift very fast. It can shift very fast because you're going to get yourself into diving deep into the shadows um, and kind of look at this. I, I feel some of you, if you don't know, but I do offer this Medusa energy reading. I just felt it a little bit here. This is Medusa's energy. It's been like great. Actually, 
my Medusa is exactly in the degrees of that full moon Gemini. <laughs> okay. Um, but I don't have six house. This is not for me as far as this, but I felt this energy because this is the place where you don't follow your higher guidance. This will feel like you're being stoned or you stone yourself. Okay. And that little example I gave you with veganism and how I struggle with my, my family and now I'm committed to not let this happen because now it's not like it's a mindset that I had to change. It's more like a self-love and self-worth and self-respect. I had to dive much deeper than just the mind because the mind was always making me feel like I had to be fighting for my beliefs. Here it's more like it doesn't affect me because the boundaries of things that made me feel like I should make people, you know, not be you know flustered with my decision uh is gone so there's something here as far as this this energy so some of you if you've been suffering from that influence because you're the black sheep of the family you do things different and people are like why are you doing this you make us feel weird um that could be a good reading for you yeah yes all right well that <laughs> thank you medusa <laughs> But this is very aligned with this energy of being aligned with your principal house number six. Let me know if that resonated. Please give it a thumbs up. It supports the channel to grow. Thank you so very much. Namaste. House seven. Well, I was shuffling and, you know, it decided to come before. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Sorry, but not sorry. Interesting energy for you, house seven. Okay, so if that full moon energy is hitting your seventh house. Let's see, let's see what comes to me. It feels interesting. It feels almost like there's a new attitude, a new behavior that you're embodying here. Let's see. All right. We have the homeland, arrival, a journey ends, establishment, building, settled. You know, I felt this energy and there's going to be some of you that haven't embody this yet when I said you know it's most like this is sorry but not sorry this is who I am okay this energy with the seventh house this is very much about how we relate in our relationships some of you if you're not yet in this place where you can just say hey that's me and that's that's what you're getting let's see what the energy is saying because this this homeland this arrival into your authentic self was reversed and that means that some of you you're going to struggle with this and that's fine because you're hearing this reading on purpose for this yes because some of you you're going to deal with the mirror effect of how people send you energy there was a lot in this full moon in gemini understanding of of what belongs to us and what doesn't which makes sense when you are trying to be authentic okay because you know if you're an empath that absorbs and are is a sponge to everything and everyone how can you know your authentic self you're just you're just way too penetrable in your aura let's see what we have so that was reverse i love myself completely and unconditionally okay reversed and my dreams reveal that magic is real and anything is possible. This is interesting. Again, with this full moon energy being held up high. Some of you, some of you, if you follow me on Instagram, and now I started putting this in the YouTube shorts, I did like this reel about the lotus, a quote, you know, a Buddhist proverb that speaks of, you know, the lotus blooming out of the, you know, the thickest, deepest mud. There's something here. Uh, maybe it feels like subconscious. It's deep. Some of you, as far as maybe the wound of unworthiness, unloving to yourself, that makes you um, maybe a little confused sometimes about... Oof, about seeing, you know, it's almost like appreciating how beautiful you are for all of what you've experienced, for everything that you've overcome. Let's see what those, yes, love cards are saying. Express your love, and I feel that's very much for you. Um, separation and make the effort. Let's look at this. We're looking more at 
the card. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I feel that this, it's almost like, you know, uh, answering or talking to yourself in a greater way. Some of you, you might not realize, and that's something that I suffered from, and I really dealt with it uh, at the beginning of 2023. You know, realizing how much of this like negative voice was in the background when I looked at myself in the mirror, when I was just, you know, waking up, putting on my makeup and having like almost like those fights and conflicts in the background. And I feel for some of you, it's almost like realizing that there's something you're doing, your voice that maybe that little voice that you're listening to that is not building you up, that makes you feel more separated. Some of you, maybe you're holding beliefs towards how people perceive you that just lower the love that you can receive, the love that you can give, because there's, there's just, there just feel a lot of unprocessed emotions experiences towards love let's see if we can get a little bit more yeah attraction and passion and they came they came a little bit like sideways um i feel this is something like related to your kundalini here there's some blocks in your chakras there's some blocks in the aura um maybe there was also some blocks with um how you're not feeling maybe as, or you have periods of time where you feel very attractive and some that you don't. And it's almost as if the universe is trying to teach you, is it related how you feel about yourself because of others looking at you or relationships that are in your life or not? Are you able to um, have this relationship, this magnetism, this attractiveness about yourself? without others and this is where the self-love and the relationship to the body and that comes from past experiences some of you you may have experienced some harsh you know um lessons and and traumas so that's what i have for you house number seven i trust that helped you please comment in below in the description box if you want to share what house and feedback and give it a like it supports the channel to grow thank you House number eight. What do we have for you, my dear house eight? For this woman energy, the house of shadows, house of merged energies with others. Play is my pathway to joy. Mm -hmm. And I have unlimited potential and claim my purpose. All I need is within me in reverse. This is interesting. All right, I, I'm doing this differently for you. Okay, but... <laughs> why not why not why not mm, fertility potential powerful creative energy initiating initiation energy mm. there's something you're not seeing about yourself and a wave and of power a surge of power that we saw for the collective in reverse okay there's a block here there's a block here it feels also very much like house seven connected to your kundalini, um, especially house eight, their sexuality energy. You might want to check my auric health and wealth um, playlist. There is a psoas, you know, there could be some womb healing. There could be something about the mother, the relationship to the mother, Am I missing some cards? Yes, I am. I was like, well, it doesn't feel complete here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Some flyers. Okay, religious factors in the reverse. Your love life, life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. Could be something, I feel as some of you, it's almost like, um, you could be holding shame, guilt, things towards sexuality, towards pleasure, um, that could be dimming your light, that could be keeping you from, I feel that with the fertility, it's almost as if like there's some unhealthy attachment. Some of you, you may have an over, overbearing parent that trying to control. There's some type of control here. Oh yeah, with that card, it says free yourself. There's some, there's, <laughs> Okay, there's some alert. Uh, there's an intruder. Uh, usually that's when someone is coming and uninvited. 
um, the dogs are barking. So there might be, there's something, there's definitely here some shadow work. Obviously, house eight. This energy of Gemini, that full moon, is about making sure you're listening to your principles. And that means, like, what do you stand for? What is your truth? And not allowing, you know, others to kind of, like, change that. I feel that it could be um, definitely that something is this dynamic it could be a parent it could be to the parents dynamic and i want to be clear with some of you if you're not talking to maybe that parent there's some toxicity or maybe you know you don't have you don't follow the religious principles you're you know an atheist because you believe in the universe and not god or whatever there's just you know it feels like there could be some things that as far as some principles that you may feel like you're fighting against always because you're, you know, breaking free from some of the patterns of the ancestral lineage because you're trying to heal that. You're trying to heal and bring healing to those chains. And feels as for you, definitely some deep dive. It's going to... Um, it's great. It's almost as if like you have to pay attention how you relate to uh, your parents or to even, you know, your relationships as far as intimate relationships. Are you able to fully enjoy them or are you feeling that it's strapping you? Some of you could be even fear of commitment because you're scared of repeating something um, that is from the family. Let's see here. Yeah, retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. House 8 with this woman energy, you definitely are invited to go within. Um, there is mm, forgiving, for, forgiving, forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. There is something, you know, that is um, obviously uh, personal to you. Um, that's a collective reading. There's too many people watching for me to dive into this, but there's there's some experience and I feel that it's almost as if you, you want to become your own parent and, and, and allow, you know, your spirit team, your spirit guide to help you with this healing. It feels, it feels a little complex, honestly, because the house of shadow is always a little com complex um, because it's hidden, okay? It's hidden, but I promise you there is something great behind it um reflections what you contemplate can actualize i feel like for you it's almost uh you know realizing that the, your fears if you're holding those fears they keep on manifesting and realizing that behind the fears there's everything that you want and more and that it's also something that's going to manifest because you have to go beyond those 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 parts of yourself that are hidden okay that's what i have for you house Eight was oh, intense as I say it. Got plenty of house eight in my chart, so <laughs> thank you so very much. Please don't forget to like, give me a little comment, share with me your feedback. I would appreciate that. And um, that's that. Thank you so very much. Namaste. House number nine. Let's see what we have for you. Okay, house number nine. What do we have with this full moon energy? Nope, no, I want something different. <laughs> okay, we want something different. Definitely, we want change. There's some change coming. Andrians, keep going. Maybe it's been a little rocky for you, House 9, but because this is the house of spiritual education, it might have been like, you know, this experience of like, oh, this ascension process, oh my God, when are we like reaping the rewards? So let's see what we have for you. Okay, in the reverse. The shell key in her skin and receptivity. It says here, reclaiming your authenticity. Okay, this is big for you, um, especially with this energy. It's interesting because house nine would carry the Sagittarius energy where the sun is right now. And that means in opposition to Gemini, um, which is, this full moon is about you realizing some things about you and letting go of certain 
expression of yourself. Uh, it's been a very popular reel on my Instagram and I believe I put it on YouTube as well in the shorts. As far as like releasing every everything that is meant to be released so you can finally receive everything that's meant to be received. Okay, and there's something here and we're going to dive deep, uh, for you house nine. And what are those things? Okay, we're going to put them up right because we are listening. And as we listen, we are shifting. We are shifting and doing the work. Okay, passion. I don't know why I feel like some kind of weird uh, ways of organizing things, but it feels purposeful. Mm, unrequited love. Okay. I really, with this, there's something in the kundalini. That means some of your chakras, and I feel your lower chakras, and that could be that you want to look at your womb. I have this aura health and wealth playlist where you have the psoas frequency, some aura womb healing. You also have like a rebalancing of the heart with the womb. I feel this is more like for you that there's some recalibration. Um, I did another reel that was about, you know, for the feminine, the sacred feminine to come into her power. And that's not gender, the feminine, the intuitive self to be able to reclaim her power. You had to, you know, connect that womb, the womb of the heart. And if you've experienced a lot of relationship that left you very hurt and wounded or unsatisfied and you haven't processed those energies, you can lose that connection between your womb and your heart. Ooh, healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. So some of you, this is where I have my super empath playlist. That might be something you want to check out. There could be some energies. I believe I have one that says about, I think it's the number two or three in the series, that is about staying true to yourself. This is very... <laughs> very much on point with this full moon energy being true to yourself you might want to check that out i trust the change unfolding in my life i you know i i fell for you house number nine that it was just a lot of change that could be sudden could be some of you also in relationships things you did not expect someone ghosting you a job loss um but it's almost as if there was, it was not for you. Some of you, it's not everyone. Again, this is a collective reading, you know, there's many people watching. It's, it's not, if it's not for you, it's because there's something greater. And sometimes it's almost like this feeling that you've been limiting yourself in believing that's all you could get. Oh, those two cards. Love yourself first and stay optimistic about your love life. This came reverse, both of them. You know, there's something about self-love and that's going to be found in those practices with your meditation, your rituals with yourself, how you do affirmation. For me, affirmations are more about, it's working better for me. But at the beginning, you guys, first of all, meditation took me one year of sound healing, engineering, so I could sit my ass down, okay? Because <laughs> this girl was too much in fight or flight. She could not sit with herself because she always expected the worst to be around, like behind the door, okay? Um, so definitely if that's you, just realize that sound is just so powerful. This is why I create what I create because I was in that situation where I could not self-reflect because I was just overwhelmed, with my experience on earth. And there's a lot of people that are in the situation because a lot of the karma hasn't been processed by our, you know, generation before us. Not because they didn't want to, but because also the, the lack of awareness, space, also the survival energy that we were in. Um, so being optimistic, knowing that like little things that you do can change a lot is very important. I feel that that's something... Um, this is interesting. I feel like Mother Mary energy, purity. If some of you know a little bit, I will mention it because it won't speak to everyone. But uh, working with Archangel Raphael, the air element, and the Archaea for Archangel Raphael is Archaea virtue, which is Mother Mary's energy. Okay, so that could be 
something for you, some of you. All right, so that's what we have. Let's see another card. Honor the masculine, respecting men, embracing the divine masculine. I'm, I'm telling you there's something about the womb, the heart, womb, healing. Uh, some of you, you have to release um, some of the, also the mental structures, okay? Because the masculine is, is our, you know, our mind. And there's some type of mindset and emotion. It's, it feels like you're really going through a very big initiation with this full moon energy, definitely for you, house nine. This is what I have for you. I trust this is supporting you. I'm sending you much love and light. Please give it a like. You can comment. That's always nice to um, hear from you guys. Thank you so very much. Namaste. House 10. Let's see what we have with this full moon energy for you. All right. I don't know what that little singing uh, <laughs> came from, but I did feel something with the throat, and I don't know if it was house nine that still carried on, um, but there could be something lingering in your field, house 10, if you have this energy for this full moon about authenticity. Might be something that you know you struggle with expressing in your workplace or for your higher purpose. It's it's important. Let's see what we have. Reflections. What you contemplate can actualize. Divine sensuality, making love, erotica. Mm experiments in the reverse with manipulation of nature forcing change cruelty in the pursuit of knowledge arrogance interesting worth waiting for getting to know each other I craft my core desires with certainty and ease. Conscious eating nourishes me. Healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. <clears throat> wow. Okay. This is interesting. It feels for your higher purpose here. Okay, because in esoteric astrology, the 10th house is not just workplace. It's more like how your higher purpose is going to be, like the structure of it. You know, fourth house is more the temple within your home. This is how that home and all the steps before can manifest into something concrete. Okay, and I feel here that there is, for some of you, some kind of um, realization that needs to come forward as far as your own energy field, okay? Because there's here some past influences. And here there's like this feeling of really enjoying the self and, and merging with the self. And here there's just like this energy of you know, working with the feedback of the universe. So I like, there's, there's some type of like becoming that I feel for you, House 10, if you have this energy, as if you've been doing this work of reflecting on yourself, of inner work, and you've been able to identify some of the shadows. And I would say for you, because that's the only card that comes reversed, and it comes with the number 33. Okay, that's kind of like echoes in my mind. Wow. On this portion, when I said that, it was 333 on this little portion. Okay, you see my face. <laughs> like, okay, all right. Uh, there's a lot of synchronicities for you. But I feel like this is about Christ consciousness. This is also the vertebrae. Okay. Some of you are part of the Level Up membership for music and you have access to um, the vertebrae, the 33 vertebrae activation. But if you don't, okay, it's something as far as 
the more you let yourself embody who you're becoming, the more you can see with more ease where there's some imbalances. There's some type of like self-mastery that I feel that is very much felt for you because you're almost like merging with those energies. But this is where you want to really have strong boundaries. So when things that are more subtle, because it feels like it could be ancestral, it could be in the DNA, it could be, you know, maybe you've had in the past, you know, or were raised by narcissistic personality disorder parents, okay, or have attracted some of those relationship. Here, there's just an f- overall feeling of mastery, of you having worked with the universe. But this is something that I want to pay attention. We're going to like pull more cards because I feel that it could be some new revelation with this full moon. Remember, the full moon wants to put light on things. There might be something that is like uh, something about your authenticity that is still merged with something else, someone else. Give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. Let me see that. Finances and career. I would say for you, pay attention to the times where you feel energized or not. In the presence of people. Wow, it was 5.55 now. I don't know what's happening with all those numbers. Okay, it's telling you also to pay attention to numbers. You know, it, it's also as if like house 10 with this full moon. It's, it's shining because you have it in a place of the wheel that is pretty high in terms of, you know, the completion of the wheel. So that means there is a lot of self-mastering that... With this energy, the authenticity lesson that wants to show itself more. And I feel that for you, it's almost like realizing those moments where maybe the presence of a certain person, a thought, even a thought, something as simple as like, hey, I should go and see this person or I should hang out or why not hang out with this person or I should go to that store and, you know, those small little details and all of a sudden feeling something in your body. Oh, or a headache. I've seen this recently happen where I would think about doing something. And that doesn't mean that the person or the the thing is bad. It's more that not right now. It's not for you right now. Okay, and there's something here as far as the getting to know each other. It's almost like you getting to know more that new version that embodies your higher self better. It's like a very, there's a part of you, if you have that energy in the 10th house, that is like becoming more and more receptive and mystical a little bit. Okay, that's what I have for you, house 10. We're going to stop here because I feel it. You know what I'm talking about. You know this. And it's almost like you know it because it's in the senses. It's very physical. And some of you, if you suffer with this, my empaths, go and check out that super empath, that auric health and wealth playlist and and upgrade yourself. (laughs) All right. That's what I have. Thank you so very much. Please don't forget to give it a like. It supports the channel. You can comment. Give me some feedback. Thank you so much. Namaste. House number 11. Let's see what we have for you. All right. I love those colors. I'm just realizing. I don't know why I feel like this is purposeful for you. Purple seems to be purposeful. Crown activation. just felt like like a dose of something I don't know let's see why I'm saying those weird words (laughs) all right house 11 soul cage rescue escape from captivity and restriction we like that this is especially with the masculine this is the thought the mind upliftment some of you if you've been feeling trapped 
Okay, in the reverse, the rhythm of my breath directs the rhythm of my life. Put it upright and I feel here. We are all sisters and reflect the divine in one another with transparency, honest, authentic, genuine, present in the reversed. Okay, I'm going to reverse them just so we can feel this. As we are feeling the reversal, we can also transmute some of those blockages. New love in the upright. Make the effort upright. Worth waiting for. Reversed. I don't know why I sighed so much. It's weird. Okay, sigh. It just reminded me of um, my lungs, the breathing, also the breath. Some of you, if you have any Aries placement connected to the lungs, by the way, if you did not know that. Um, some of you, you may have also some... Maybe Chiron, I don't know why I felt there's something about a wound here because of the soul cage. And that's if that could be some of you have Aries, Chiron Aries. Um, and you might want to check out that, you know, a wounded healer playlist. It almost feels like I'm like losing my words. Maybe there's something also about being faced with others. 11th house energy is networking, is social. And we have this Gemini energy, third house energy with this full moon that is about authenticity. So it feels like there's maybe some hard times to be yourself in front of the public, in front of your social network, okay? Especially with the transparency here. So again, if that is a wound and if you haven't checked it out, go check out the Chiron Wounded Healer. It doesn't have to be Aries. Uh, you can look at your personal birth chart, see where that is as far as your current placement and go and rebalance this. This playlist is such a gift that, you know, I worked on. Um, I felt how powerful this was for me. Every time that I was doing my personal placement, it felt like I was almost like looking at a certain chapter of my soul's experience and being able to review and then put that book aside and do this. And I felt this. I even had that very strong image that I had like a pile, pile of books like this that was unprocessed. And I'm like every time that I would do this meditation with this frequency, I would just be able and then put it aside. And it felt very empowering Citrine energy, some of you, that might be something as far as like bringing more confidence is something that could be blocking you as far as being in the spotlight, being yourself in front of people. Um, it's definitely something that is creating maybe some discomfort. It could be from, you know, triggers with soul sisters or your actual sisters or, you know, Feminine figures, it feels more. Um, maybe some of you, if you feel like you're looking up or admiring or even envying people that are able to do this, it, it's, it's purposeful for you to release those blocks. It's like, what do you feel is keeping you from being that, that what which you're seeing that feels so attractive to you? Because ultimately, it's not so much what people do that we look it up and admire, it's more the embodiment of authenticity. That's because they're doing what they love. It's love in motion. That's authenticity. And this is where, you know, it's going to show you that whatever has been resisting you or whatever you may have been struggling with, you know, whatever that is, it's going, it's almost as if, just like a dish that you're preparing and on a stove. It's like, in French, it's mijoté. How do you say mijoté in French, in English? Stew a little bit, kind of, you know. Um, <laughs> it's like mijoté, there's no freaking English word for that. Um, yes, it's staying on the, on this fire, subtle, so it's almost like, there's going to be so much more flavor for your house 11. 
but it's because you're going to feel such a contrast. We're talking about soul cage. Some of you, so again, Chiron wanted a healer, and uh, you might want to look at the soul uh, fragment retrieval. This is under your auric light or your auric field, um, health and wealth, okay? Uh, so there's something that is great that's coming up with this energy as far as this full moon of your authentic self, but we have some blockages. But now already as you listen to all of this, we're just cooking it, okay? We're cooking it, we're allowing it to uh, evaporate, I feel, for you, okay? This came up, it came in the reverse, you have to trust. You have to trust your process, you have to trust, and I said the word, you have to trust your process. It's yours and it's specifically yours with its falls and its ups and it's down and it's a spiral and it's chaos for a very specific reason. I don't think I could have said that past like in a years ago because I was still struggling what why 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 is it happening and now I can see the beauty in my own chaos and there's something about this for you because the secret feminine is that energy that builds, that, that can destructure everything, you know, creates and dis destroys, okay? I had very powerful readings with um, Kali's energy. Um, some of you right now, I'm doing Medusa. So think for you, maybe House 11, that could be something. Medusa is all about the injustice, how we, when we're not in alignment, we can do things that, that stone us. Like, you know, you turn into stone or you feel like you're being stoned um, because you're not in alignment. You're not in your truth and you're not recognizing where you have to put some strong boundaries. So that's why I have for you House 11. I trust this is supporting you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. Namaste. House 12, let's check this out for this full moon. What do we have for you? If you have this full moon in the subconscious house, in the Akash. Oh, we got a card that did not come with us, so we're taking it. Ooh, a card that didn't come with us. Um, you might want to check out the soul fragments retrieval, okay? Because it's almost like a missing part, something that was missing that is coming to the light. I like this for you, house 12. Okay. In the reverse, I free myself from critical thoughts towards my body and worth. In the reverse, with a steady mind, I am connected to our collective experience. This has been for a few houses, and this is very much about the soul retrieval. Okay, we got to retrieve something that is taking away your power remember that's the collective energy we're receiving a surge of energy and this is about self-love self empowerment mm. the unseen too much is hidden from you with the 12th house you think <laughs> sorry i can't help it but this is what my mind says in my head like you think oh Yearning, longing for someone, undesired separation, pinning. Okay. All right. Let's see what that is. All right. Stay, stick around. Stick around. Why am I saying that? <laughs> okay. Stick around. Stuck like glue. Feels like... Okay. Let's, let's first make the effort. Love yourself first. Okay. All right, this is, feels like trying too hard for something to work, especially if it's a, a relationship, okay, it's with someone. And that can be also, if you're with someone, that doesn't mean you have to separate, but it's almost like, you see how he's almost like sleeping, is unconscious, and she's like almost begging to be heard. Now, I know this energy very well. Whether single or not, okay? Um, it doesn't matter. Because you can be in a relationship, and I've seen this happening with my men many times, where it's almost like, see me. And usually when I feel like I'm not being seen, it's because I'm not seeing myself. And what I mean by this is usually the feminine, your sacred feminine wanting to be heard. 
and especially with this, okay? As I'm channeling this, I've been offering this Medusa reading and only a few houses, but this feels also maybe something you want to check out. Medusa is about injustice. She's a high priestess, fallen highest priestess that was violated, okay? And turn into an ugly version. There's on my Telegram page, if you're looking to learn more about Medusa, a very different site or perspective of her teachings, which are great. Um, but she will help you to understand where some of your behaviors and beliefs, especially here for you, I feel thoughts, are almost like freezing you into turning you into stone. Instead of allowing you to build an edifice, your temple, you know, something sacred, it turns you into something that's just is too scared to move forward. Also, that feeling of people stoning you, you know, as if you're doing something that is so against your own principles, which is big with this full moon in Gemini, because it's all about authenticity and following your own principle. So I love this energy here. For you, as far as diving deep, we're going to get a little bit more insight. I know it feels like Audrey, but what I'm saying first, feels like you're trying too hard, trying too hard because this is almost like if you're looking at someone to see you, hear you, even if it's just like, uh, even if it's like your social media or, you know, your job, getting that recognition, I'm here. This is usually <laughs> the part of you you're not seeing that are making you behave that way on the outside when really you're you're needing to hear whatever is inside okay let's pull some more cards for you it feels a little complex the way you you created that web that matrix yeah some of you it's on the web flirt mm, extend your lighthearted energy to others okay some of you i feel uh, you know, that energy flirt, I don't know if it's like something about wanting to be seen and having an energy that is, it feels like weakened boundaries, okay? It feels like because there's a wound of being acknowledged, recognized, and that could be something that is coming from your childhood. Parents that didn't appreciate or give you props or weren't there, weren't just not there to acknowledge you. And there's like this desire of being accepted and loved by many that could be, and, and it's almost like here, it's almost like, but when you do this, then you're hyper-focused on the one that don't care because they're repeating a certain wound. Pay attention to the red flags and you love in reverse. Okay, it feels like there's some type of narcissistic attraction, fatal attraction. Again, this is a collective reading, so I'm not going to dive much deeper in this, but there's something about chasing, runner chaser. Okay, especially if you haven't been able to manifest some of the things that you want. Uh, currently, you're feeling blocked. I have a runner chaser. I have a law of attraction. that I, I compose this exactly for this because i could feel it was last eclipse in um march i think 2023 i was seeing how i was like holding certain desires but the way that i was thinking so my masculine and my feminine i desire feminine and i think uh with those thoughts and they were not <laughs> at all in in coherence and i was like how the frack do i get out of this and i use very powerful mantra and frequencies that help you with that law of attraction and and rebalancing this so this is what i have for you for some of you if you need personal guidance that's also uh something i offer um that's it house number 12 i trust this has supported you please give it a thumbs up if it did you can share in the comments um, your experience. Thank you so very much. Namaste.